there was never a chance of this movie not being a kind of insane good time. Let's be honest, it's, it looks like a low-budget Total Recall. It predicted the problems with that trope. And you ultimately just have a character who's maybe not the best person in the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cinefix Top 100. I'm Clint Gage, and joining me, IGN's Director of Video Programming, Michael Calibro. How Hello, are you doing, Clint? man? Hello, Clint Gage. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. He ever asks me. And also joining us, Alex Stedman, IGN's senior news editor and just a ginormous fan of Terminator 2. Yep. Still true. Still true. Yep. Well, I hope it's going to be true forever. Because It would be really funny if we got to the T2 episode and it's like 87 on my list. At some point, yeah, yeah. we're just going to reveal it's like, honestly, I don't like that <laughs> no, much. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it that much. <laughs> but uh, welcome back to the show for our second episode of the Top 100. To remind you guys how this is working, the three of us spent a lot of time and effort on our personal Top 100 movies of all time lists. Our producer, Dan, spent a fraction of that time working on his own. And then he smushed all four of them together in an algorithm that he refuses to explain to us mm-hmm. to create a master list, the, Cine- the Cinefix Top 100 list of, uh, w- I hope they're all good movies. I mean, they got to be all great movies if they were made if they, out of If they personal. aren't all great movies, then it is purely Dan's fault. I think we can all yep. agree. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have no idea what Dan put on his list. He yeah. probably put a lot of turds on there, I, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. That's why he's Dan? not on the camera. He's behind exactly. it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so all that to say, welcome back to, to this show. And uh, this week, Dan has chosen for us, um, I, honestly, a real winner. Yeah. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to 2004. I forgot. What's this movie about again? This mo- uh, That's <laughs> the movie. That's what they do. That would be, uh, that would be fun to get the eternal, to get eternal sunshine zing yeah. by eternal sunshine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this goes back to 2004, uh, directed by uh, the incredibly quirky Michelle Gondry, written by the relentlessly weird Charlie Kaufman. Mm-hmm. Like the, the pedigree of this movie, like there was never a chance of this movie not being a kind of insane good time. I wouldn't go as far as to say good time, but definitely insane. <laughs> no, it's, it's a good time. I mean, I this think. is it's a good time. It, yeah. yeah, but I'm I'm not saying it's, it's not, a not bad time. I'm not saying it's. I guess what I'm trying to say is like uh, Charlie Kaufman's not always the greatest of time. No, yeah. it's it, that's very true. But yeah. I think this is one of his better time movies. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I would say even if it is a bad time, it's an accessible bad time. That's yeah. absolutely. You know? There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. It's we worth, really yeah. described Charlie right. Kaufman's career <laughs> an accessible, accessible bad time. <laughs> That's great, uh, but the film also has an incredible cast. Jim Carrey, one of his one of his mostly serious roles, mm-hmm. uh, which is is always very interesting. Uh, he he's surrounded by an incredible bunch of. This of, is the good, the number twenty three. The good is that what this is? <laughs> That's not how I would describe this movie at all. But we can talk more about that later. Um, but you got Kate Winslet, you got Tom Wilkinson, you've got Kirsten mm-hmm. Dunst and Elijah Wood and Mark Ruffalo. I mean, it's an incredible David Cross. David Cross shows up. Oh my up. gosh! Yeah, what it a is yeah. a a. For 2004, a bunch of very, uh, in retrospect, it's it's a a heavier hitting cast than it was. Yeah, but at it the wasn't time. at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, it, it's just a really cool collection of actors. I think Ruffalo is definitely on his way up. Yeah. Jim Carrey is is cresting. I think he's, he's getting close to peaking. Yeah. I think here, like this is this is pretty close. Kirsten Dunst. This is sandwiched in between two of the Spider Man movies. Yeah. So Elijah Woods just straight up. Did I mention Elijah Wood yet? No, Elijah I don't Wood is no. yeah. He's coming off of the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, so he's he's yeah. looking for new highs. Yeah, he's just exactly. playing a little creep in this. He's just looking yeah. for something interesting to yeah. do. He's like, I don't need the money right now. Yeah. Let me be a creep for for four scenes. Yeah. Um, Tom Wilkinson, like he he does Batman Begins shortly mm. after this. So Tom Wilkinson is he kind would, of kind of having a moment. Would have been this year, right? Wouldn't it? Is Batman Begins 05? That's 06. 06, I think. Yeah. So it was it was on the heels of this. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, point is, Tom Wilkinson yeah. is like the least important part of this, <laughs> this whole conversation. <laughs> we don't need to get hung up on that. Um, but it's a really good movie. It's a movie mm-hmm. about what would you do if you could erase a whole person, a whole relationship mm-hmm. from your memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love when like movies take really, really simple human concepts and then make a big sci-fi idea out of them. And that's why, you know, not to bring up an even more recent movie, but Everything Ever All at Once did that. I love movies that do that. Yeah. Just make it totally surreal. Yeah. yeah. And you, you've already hit on an interesting part about, about this, like the, the through line of, of music video directors. Yes. Yeah. Doing quirky sci-fi so fantasy true. I didn't think movies. That's so true. The Daniels doing every – which 
Like mm-hmm. it was a great time to be a music video director in the late nineties and the so early, really, early two thousands. I was just gonna say it's really the only time to have been a music video director. I mean, it was it was it, it, the I feel 90s, like it was, you had like the peak of MTV, I yeah. think. But yeah, yeah, yeah still in the two thousands they were still doing music videos back you, then. Yeah. You got Fincher. Yeah, yeah. coming out do, doing Fight Club. Right, yeah. yeah. Um you've got um McG. Spike Jones. Yeah. <laughs> to a to a lesser extent. <laughs> you got McG, McG making a name for himself. Doing some Charlie's Angels. So, yeah. But between Spike Jones doing Being John Malkovich and Adaptation and mm-hmm. Michelle Gondry getting to do Eternal Sunshine, the thing that I'll always remember about Eternal Sunshine is every party I went to in college, I'll go ahead and date myself, 2000 to 2004, every party I went to, somebody had the a poster. DVD box set oh. of the work of Spike Jones, Michelle Gondry, and Chris Cunningham. And they had that DVD playing on mute. It was just for the visuals, mm-hmm. but it was on mute and it was on loop at every, but they would just put that on and it would be on their, you know, their big screen or whatever over in yeah. the corner. I think that's a whole genre of like college poster and college like kid movies. Like I feel, I feel like Fight Club yeah. is on there, you know? Oh yeah. Right. Right. Uh, you got to have that, that taxi driver poster with, yep. with the, the mohawk and the guns. And mm. yep. it was, a, it was a very, it was a look, it was a dorm look. Yeah. That you could subscribe to. It was like a starter kit that you got as a freshman in, in college. We, in were, we, were, yeah. we were so cultured back then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we really knew our shit. You know, back yeah. before you put your movie posters in a frame. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it was just tic tac. Just yeah. raw. And that would always like Ripping. grease yeah. through the, <laughs> nah, yeah. there would be little spots on the corners of your poster. But yeah, I mean, so this era of filmmaking, like there was an appetite for this. It was coming out of the 90s where indie yeah. movies kind of kind of got a, a stronger foothold on in the, the filmmaking landscape in general. Mm-hmm. And these music video directors that had some really quirky ideas that would like, let's blow these up into a whole feature films. Yep. Uh, they were getting their shot. Mm-hmm. There's like a 10 year window here where it was a really, really nice moment. In between making Christopher Walken dance to Fat Boy, is it Fat Boy Slim or Daft Punk? That was fat. That was Fat, a fat Boy, Boy Slim, Slim song. Yeah. yeah, you remember that? No. Christopher, it was all, it was a wonderful music video. Yeah. It was Christopher Walken just dancing by himself yeah. to it was Weapon of Choice by Fat Boy Slim oh. uh, through the the lobby of a hotel room. That was a Spike yeah. Jones thing, but that's a different guy altogether. Michelle yeah. Gondry did like all of uh, White Stripes music videos, mm-hmm. and you can look at like, well, we'll talk about that in the art of the scene. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. What do you? I mean, so what? What do you guys think? I, I mean, just general thoughts about Eternal Sunshine. It's it's close to twenty years old now. Yeah, I mean, again, bringing up college, I first saw it in college and just fell in love with yeah. it, and I, I really resonate with that human relationship at its core. But also, like, I also really relate to like Kate Winslet's character. Like, I don't color my hair, but it's like I feel like a lot. And not saying all men do this, but I feel like a lot of women kind of relate to that, like being made into a concept. And I think that's something, it's why it's held up so well. Like you have the, and I won't skip ahead to the quotes, but you have that one quote that she says that people still quote all the time. Well, what is it? I, no, which one are you talking about? Later. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but no, I, I love this. It's, it's my- quality tease. Yeah, it's my favorite. Um, it's my favorite Kaufman. Um, and I like a lot of Kaufman, but this is my favorite one. It is my favorite Kaufman. Yeah. I, I, the rest of his, his stuff gets- I don't know, little, little, little less accessible yeah. of a bad time for me. And like, and that's like, and not to get <laughs> too much into it, but like, um, I'm thinking of ending things, which I always almost call. I'm, uh, I think I should leave, or I think you should leave. Right. Um, okay. it got a little too bad time for me. Yeah. You know yeah. that one. That one. It was uh, trying to recapture that magic, and nope, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, wasn't wasn't for me. But like adaptation and synecdoche New York, which I still really, like, I really I, like adaptation. I, I do too, but yeah. there's something that doesn't quite. There's there's something that doesn't quite tick all the boxes for me well, the I, way that eternal yeah. sunshine does i think what I, what like puts eternal sunshine over the edge for me is that it ends on a hopeful note it yeah. ends it mm-hmm. has a very hopeful core it's kind yeah. of like wholesome in a way that like humans are gonna try to keep loving no matter what like even if you like throw all these obstacles in front of them and i think it's a really really inspiring movie yeah. in that way it also has that like like love is special kind of ending you know because like no matter what like they end up back together and they're like we yeah. know we're terrible well, but we're yeah. gonna try it it's damn not, it even though it's we it's not just about the memories or the experience yeah. Yeah. there's something in us that you know can and you believe gravi- it by the end they you have really a gravitational do. pull toward yeah. each other that's that's a thing that it, it's one of these movies it's like you know what i want to believe that yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, like, you, like root for them even though you know they're not right for each other right. like it, and i i give a lot of credit to um jim and kate for that like it's they're so good in it and i think yeah. i think it's my favorite jim carrey role and maybe my favorite kate winslet role it's up there. I Favorite mean, serious Jim Carrey. Role. Yeah, no, yeah, I do love like liar, liar. It's a and, little yeah. hard to compare this to talking out of his butt in Ace Ventura. Yeah. Well, that's or a, yeah. is it? 
Hey. I don't, I won't call this peak Jim Carrey. I'm going to go on the record right now. But there's say, like two different no? Jim Carreys. I think I, I think even, this is because because by 2004 he had done he'd done Man in the Moon, Truman, Truman Show. Show. He'd done the That's Truman what Show, I, which I love Truman yeah. Show. I do. It's I think it's on my list, but yeah. no spoilers. But no, I I this is I, he's just so vulnerable in this. It feels yeah. so real. And I think once you get into some of the behind the scenes, which we will get to, he apparently didn't like shooting it, and yeah. I think it shows. Yeah, I read I read some of that too. But there, there there's the the version of Jim Carrey that's like there's the comedy Jim Carrey and then there's there are movies that that temper that take the comedy Jim, Jim Carrey and put him in a dramatic role that still works for him like that's I think that's mm-hmm. what the Truman Show I agree, was yeah. about um, obviously Man in the Moon he was doing an yeah. Andy Kaufman impression all the mm-hmm. time and yeah. so there's that like big performance energy but reined into a very a very serious persona um, but then this is just it's it, the, how quiet and how understated he is through yeah. most of this movie is is really incredible. Yeah, I really like this movie. It's like it's his punch drunk love. Sure, you know, like yeah. that's like yeah. coming on the heels of that, like of that, like what was punch drunk love like ninety eight, ninety nine, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Really, a golden era though yeah. for like comedic act- actors finding their dramatic yeah. stride. Yeah, oh, oh two. Yeah, so it was right, right in the wow. same the same couple of year window there. Oh yeah, great. Eternal Sunshine was oh four. Yeah. yeah, so it's like he did a great job of just like you know peeling back like the bombastic like comedy Jim Carrey and doing this like raw and like meaningful performance that like right. really resonates to your point like even 20 years later yeah and he's like could not be more of a normal dude like he like that's mm-hmm. his whole entire character he's just so normal yeah. and yeah. borderline boring well that's that's the flaw that right. that Clementine finds in it right. is he's that too he's boring. just boring, boring and he's making me boring yeah you know? like, oh, like imagine yeah. casting Jim Carrey as a just a boring ass guy right. Jim like, Carrey it's... can't be boring I mean, oh yeah, he's he's incredibly fascinating in his boringness in this movie. Yeah, yeah. he make he makes boring not boring. Yeah, but, I exactly. Mean, even yeah. even now, like he just uh, like he's he doesn't really act that much now, and he's just like all of a sudden became this like political cartoonist. That's <laughs> it's incredible. He's in the Sonic movies, like, yeah. <laughs> and like he's coming back to his like '90s roots. You know? Oh yeah, like, that's that's fully his '90s yeah. roots. Yeah. The Robotnik's chick, yeah. So in terms of this isn't peak Jim Carrey. Is is there any other Michelle Gondry that you you would Has consider? Has he done many other movies? He did. I'm, I'm he a followed fan of Be Kind Rewind. Yeah, are you? Oh, oh, so I he followed like this up. Movie. He followed this up immediately with Silence, Science of Sleep. Yeah, which was another one. It, I, that one felt like that one felt like it was doubling down on the wrong things yeah. Yeah. that he did right in Eternal yeah. Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Like it was still good, kind of. But I honestly, frankly. I don't really remember it. Yeah. But then yeah, Be Kind Rewind was was a weird blast. And introduce the world to Sweeting, which uh, <laughs> you know, speaking of which, we're on Cinefix right now, which has more than made a name for itself doing Sweeting, Sweeting more successful movies. Well. Well, so, this whole channel is built on you swimming in the wake of Michelle. Sure, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> we owe so much. To yeah. So, yes, the, thank you, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> um but the but then he did like the Green Hornet that was an, that was oh an interesting. My gosh. I forgot about that. That was an interesting, like you know, indie director getting getting a bigger yeah. budget. I guess uh, that was a, that was a weird one. Yeah, but Which, I don't think anything holds a candle to Eternal Sunshine, no. and I like Be Kind Rewind. Yeah, no, but no. I, I don't think Eternal Sunshine was just it's so it's the right idea for the right filmmaker at the right time. Yeah, yep. and it just with the right cast. Random thoughts for Valentine's Day, two thousand and four. Today is a holiday invented by greeting card companies to make people feel like crap. Talking about like awards consideration, like Academy stuff. Yeah, it, yeah. it got best screenplay, I think. Yeah. I think it won. Kate Winslet was nominated for best actress and it won best original screenplay um, for Pierre Bismuth, Michelle Gondry, and Charlie Kaufman. Now, Pierre Bismuth, I believe, was a, the friend of Michelle Gondry, who is he's a, an artist who came up with the idea to begin with. Like he pitched the idea as like, what if somebody handed you a card that said they'd erased you from their memory? Yeah. Yep. And like that was where the whole idea started. Yeah. Um, which again, to, there, here's your small, very emotional state yeah. kind of idea that gets blown up into this weird. And they thing. don't make a big deal at the science too, which I think is really important. It's but, like, yep, we figured it out. We know how the brain stuff works, and you just don't question it because it's good. Yeah. Yeah. The way that they pulled that off mm-hmm. to me, I think, was uh, was was really great uh, in in the sense that it's such a lo fi looking yeah. movie. Oh and yeah, they walk into this like nut, like dinky doctor's office. Yeah. It's not like some it looks like big it's a, lab. It looks like it's a trailer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Let's be honest. It's it looks like a low budget Total Recall. Yeah. <laughs> 
Exactly. I mean, with a little bit yeah. of, you know, uh, Ghostbusters yeah. Uh, yeah. colander helmet kind yeah. of mixed in there. But I, I, I love like a, because this is a, is this a science fiction movie? Yes. Yes, I would it's say sci-fi, so. right? Yeah, it's yeah. a sci-fi romance. They're using machines to remove memories. Yeah, right. I would see that sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. And they, they did it fiction. so, so low tech, which is great, which is a mm. trope that I really love in science fiction movies where it's, you know, I mean, think about Brazil, right? Like, mm. it's just a gross, dirty looking bunch of tubes in that movie, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's a weird sci-fi. I mean, that's another one where it's they're messing with somebody's brain, but yeah. they do yeah. it with a, a an ugly metal helmet. And like you think you shouldn't do it, but like, and there's a great line in it where um, Jim Carrey's like, where Joel is like, is there a chance of brain damage? And they're like, the whole procedure is brain it's damage. That's what you're signing up for. Brain yeah, damage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's move into the art of the scene section. Yeah. Let's, let's talk brilliant moments. We, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are, of course, every movie's got moments uh, mm -hmm. that work and some that don't, but these ideally in the Cinefix Top 100 have more that work than they don't. But if they They're, don't, it's Dan's fault. It's Dan's fault. Um, this movie is just littered wall to wall <sighs> with brilliant little moments. Oh my yeah. One of my favorite things about this movie, and this, this isn't a specific moment, unfortunately, but it's it, this movie is a masterclass in like making iconic imagery. Yeah. And yeah. creating imagery that you can recall in an instant oh. 40 minutes later. That shot of Kate Winslet being pulled across the ice, that's yeah. iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but even little things like, you know, when he's first in the office talking to Tom Wilkinson about the procedure mm -hmm. and Elijah Woods kicks over a bucket behind him. Yeah. yeah. And he, he turns and he looks at it and then we're off into another scene. It's innocuous things like that that mm -hmm. later when we're in his memory yeah. and we show up to that scene, not only do we remember that time that Elijah Wood kicked a bucket. Mm hmm but when Elijah looks up and his eyes are like upside down and yeah. weird looking, like yeah. we recognize that as being different from the first time that we saw it. And like this movie is, is just chock full of those tiny little things that these things that Michelle Gondry plants once mm -hmm. yeah. and then revisits over and over again, tweaking slightly. And we're not only able to recognize the moment itself, but how it's changed and why that's significant or why that's weird. Yeah. Which also makes it endless fun to rewatch. Yeah. Because like even like, and to go back to the very beginning, you know, when they're first meeting or, you know, meeting on that train and they immediately have that familiarity. Like mm -hmm. you sense that the first time you watch it, but then like going back to watch it again, it's such a fun movie to yeah. rewatch. But even the way he kicks the covers off of the bed yeah. in that opening yeah. scene, because that opening scene is like, it's the most innocuous example of it. But when they revisit mm -hmm. it at the very end of the movie, like you remember exactly, like you recognize it immediately. It's, uh, I mean, the whole movie's like that and it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific moments though that, that jump out at you? The forced perspective scene when he's like a child. That's yeah, like that's such a like, bonker scene. It's, yeah. it's so wild, right? And it, yeah. like it's so wild because it does such a great job of juxtaposing like the cinematography and visual style of that movie that it goes out of its way to establish in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So so it could deliver on the eccentric eccentricities of memory mm -hmm. later on in those scenes right like when you, when we like when the movie opens up it's just like not very flat kind of like handheld you know like it's very naturalistic mm -hmm. like that naturalistic reality it's just a perfect setup so like when it goes into the memories and it becomes like colorful and bombastic and stuff like that mm -hmm. like it it makes those scenes like really pop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I just, and it's around that same time, but yeah. yeah, when he decides to fight back against the procedure within his dream, which yeah, yeah it's, it's basically that same time. Yeah. Um, and you have that scene where like they're under the covers and she's like, tell me I'm pretty. And he's like, you're pretty. And then he's like, let me keep this one. And the yeah. entire movie shifts. And it's like, it's mm -hmm. him fighting against the thing that he thought he wanted. And I feel like that's the whole point of the movie. Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing too, because that mm -hmm. happens like that's a midpoint. Yeah. Like, him making the decision that he wants it to stop. It. Yeah. And happens right in the middle like yeah. it's it's actually a really simple story yeah like oh, it's in, so a, simple. in a lot of like yeah. it's it's a very clean straightforward structurally very textbook very simple yeah. story when you when you really step back from it but the fact that it's so weird and the concept is so out there mm -hmm. like and that's another thing that's brilliant about this movie is they go out of their way to make sure because the concept is so elevated mm -hmm. like it's you know it, it's a a procedure to remove very specific memories from your from mm -hmm. your your brain. Um, everything else had to be super grounded and super easy so that we could just go along with that bonkers concept. Oh yeah, like right? Joel so, and Clementine are people we all know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even to the point, I I read an, an interview uh, at the time with the American Cinematographer, which is a wonderful magazine. Um, 
the with uh, Ellen Curris, who shot the movie, that Gondry initially wanted it not lit at all, like oh. no no light, no anything, that like been everything a natural, and like that's one of those choices that I, I feel it like sounds like a good idea. Like you run into yeah. directors yeah. that are like, oh no, I just, let's just go, you know, completely natural light, and then the, any DP would be like, eh, yeah, that's impossible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we can't. <laughs> We can't do hey, that. Hey, Jamie, can we get a real natural look on this? Uh, I just don't. I want to use natural light well, yeah, for this because yeah. like, it needs to feel organic and conversational. Yeah. Are you just turn the lights off. Yeah. Um, but the uh, but that that was part of the push and pull with the the creative yeah. apparently of the look of it. it to, to your point about it being kind of flat and handheld and yeah. like every there was apparently they even uh, did a scene one of the driving scenes where. Um, they were in a car. There were two cameras in the in the back seat. Yeah, just like a Civic, yeah. like not even like a like a you know a yep. minivan or mm -hmm. something. And there was a an, um, an AC, an assistant camera up, like pulling focus on both of them because there just wasn't room. But it had to be handheld and it had to be quick and dirty yeah. and it had yeah. to be you know. Um, so really leaning into the organic sort of natural look of the thing um, mm -hmm. was key to the whole concept. Yeah, which. It's one of those movies where the the form and the function are just pulling in the same direction. It's also one of those movies where like New Yorkers don't live in unrealistic apartments. Like their apartments look like normal New York apartments. I just yeah. appreciate but they, that. Yeah, yeah, they were. It was, I mean, it was all like Long Island stuff. Yeah, and she Brooklyn, and she guess, works or... at a Barnes and Noble. Like yeah. it's all just very normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I do think to to go circle back real quick to the um, Michelle Gondry and his his work. Mm -hmm. Like all of the music videos that he did. Like he did. Do you remember Foo Fighters? It's, I fell down a very deep and hard to get out of rabbit hole watching Michelle Gondry's music. No, videos. I want to. It sounds fun. Foo Fighters Everlong. He, they, oh, he, directed, he, did, that. he directed that. That's a classic. White Stripes. Uh, you remember their video for Dead Leaves on the Dirty Ground? Yeah. No. And it was so they go, it's, it's Jack and Meg White go into a house and he's projecting, he filmed other stuff in the same location and then projected it onto the walls to make it look like it was to, like at the same scale. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. Um, so there's things like that. I mean, he he did more or less all of their elephant record mm. for as, as those. But then there's there's another one, um, Let Forever Be by the Chemical Brothers, that was like they kept doing these weird camera tricks where it would like sort of kaleidoscope out and yep. then it would match cut to dancers for being like the same main main character. Mm -hmm. uh, that's me doing dancer shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can look and you can see all of these camera tricks and all of these edit tricks that he did. They're all very lo-fi. Yeah. They're all very in-camera focused. Um, the seams show, like in a, in a major of, way, like nothing is perfectly clean or crisp. I mean, that's a total sunshine. But that's exactly. his charm. Yeah. Even exactly. In, even in uh, Be Kind, Rewind, right? Mm -hmm. right? Like his that's music true, videos, yeah. Like that, he, he really does love the seams, which makes it feel more real, you know, like worked on mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like there's there's a texture to it that yeah. you know that uh, you know that handmade feel. Yeah, is, I think is if this movie so was too crisp well, looking, it wouldn't work. Kind of like a like a like trip to the moon, like you know, like that Millier yeah stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, yeah. where it's just like yeah, they're on the moon. It doesn't have to be photorealistic. Yeah. I don't I don't need to yeah. really think be, that they're yeah, on the yeah, moon. Yeah. I need to get the energy yeah. of what it would be yeah, like yeah, to yeah, be yeah. on the moon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean it's that it's that lo-fi stuff. It's the seam showing that that buys this this crazy concept I, and the gorillaness of it all too. Like there's one incredibly brilliant moment. Just the energy of the movie being sold by how they made it too is 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 every I read it or there's an interesting uh, interview with Jim Carrey and Michelle Gondry where they talk about you know the scene where they go see the circus, the elephants are walking into town. Yeah, that was like spur of the moment. Yeah. They just they were filming a different scene and they were like, hey. The circus in town. Elephants are showing up. Let's go. And yeah. they all piled in a van with a camera and they just ran out there and they shot a scene where Joel and Clem are looking at elephants. <laughs> and that wasn't in the script. That wasn't in, oh, that wasn't great. planned. It was yeah. just a thing. It was like, Michelle Gondry was like, there's elephants. We got to go see the elephants. A very normal reaction they, to yes. that. Yeah. And, and the idea that like that energy showing up with Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet's performance, like they're yeah. just like the idea that that's a random memory. Mm -hmm. And it's something very specific. That's that's an image that you can look at and realize, like, oh yeah, no, I'm with you. I love yeah. elephants. This is awesome. Yeah, um, it's a great scene. It's a great scene. Yeah, and it and it happened just by a complete accident. And I that, didn't. I didn't find that in my research. I like that one. Yeah, I'm skipping ahead to the things you didn't I was know here. Say, yeah, but I didn't know that. <laughs> well, so maybe we can talk about it again later. <laughs> Obviously, like how they made it, the the 
you know the the tricks that they all the all the fun mm-hmm. um technical things that they did to come but the performances are legitimately great too yeah, yeah. i think kate winslet is at, I, I think i said earlier that jim carrey was at his best and i would say that about kate and i think the whole clementine character is so well done I'm, and one of the reasons this movie holds up so well is because it like it was prescient in the conversation of the manic pixie dream girl. Mm. You know, yeah. it it predicted the problems with that trope. And you ultimately just have a character who's maybe not the best person in the world, but she's just trying to get by. Yeah. And I think Kate does that really really well. And you know, at that point in her career, like she had, she was coming off Titanic a few years ago. Um, but I think this really showed what she could do. And I, I love this role was for Re- Winslet. Was Revolutionary Road before or after I think this? it was a little bit that after. That was after this. That was after this? Yeah. Because yeah. like, between this role and that one, like she was really cruising. And she's so like, and you and you believe why, you know, Joel is drawn to her. She's so yeah. magnetic in this yeah. movie. Uh, she's so charismatic. And, and you really believe that she is this character who is just like kind of flying by the seat of her pants. And she's like kind of a mess, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I looked up who she lost to for uh, Best Actress at the Oscars because she was nominated for it. Yeah. And uh, that was Hillary Swank's year, Million Dollar, Dollar Baby. Uh, million Dollar Baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think anyone was beating Hillary that year. Yeah. I, I yeah. Love that movie. <laughs> That's one that really holds yeah. up. We're yeah, still talking exactly. about that saying. one. That's what I'm saying. Like, who is still talking about right. Million Dollar Baby? But like, she has. I, the number of Best Picture winner, because that won Best Picture that year too, right? Uh, but, and yeah, Clint. I, and best director. Oh Clint. my god, it cleaned up. Clint's are the worst. Yeah, Clint's are um, the worst. And Morgan Freeman too. That movie cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, but that's a movie that like the number of best picture winners that yeah. are that nobody talks about ten years later. Yeah. I wonder I wonder what percentage of them it, it is. It cleaned up it uh, campaigned real good, I think yeah, is what that I was. I think so too. Kate to Kate Winslet did uh she did Life of David Gale immediately prior to this. Yeah. Then Eternal Sunshine. Uh, then she went on to Finding Neverland and the Little Children. And Where was Revolutionary? That was like a Revolutionary Road was several years later. It was 08. Yeah, 08. It was four, four years later. I feel like it was a She won point. for the reader in 08 also. She had a good 08. Yeah. yeah. She had a good like few years. Like we were talking I mean, about she's how. Still, oh, dude, yeah, she's like, still that, doing great. That, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, you know, in terms of memorable performances, uh, like, and this is a thing about, you know, the danger of setting too high a bar for yourself. Yeah. Like Kate Winslet was just par for the course excellent kate winslet yeah. <laughs> in this movie yeah and so like which she is in every movie you know jim carrey's performance stands out because it's so different it's great mm-hmm. in a different way that he normally is but like kate winslet is, is just so good all the time totally um and they're so good together yeah. they have yeah. such good chemistry in this movie the, the other thing too like the difference between clementine real clementine mm-hmm. and the clementine that exists in jim carrey's brain yep yes exactly is, is different that's what I love about it. Yeah. Like that is the thing that stands out to me in this movie. And I'm just going to go ahead and blow my best quote. Go ahead. Because I've been yeah. bringing, I've been talking about it too much. That too many guys think I'm a concept or I complete them or I'm going to make them alive. But I'm just a f***ed up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Don't assign me yours. Yep. Oh, that is a great yeah. line. Looking yeah. for my own peace of mind. Don't, don't assign, assign me yours. yours. Yeah. Oh, I just like, and I remember like that quote being big in like the Tumblr days, but it even still like hold, it was such a Tumblr quote. But like it still holds it's up. Such yeah. a it's such quote. a Tumblr quote, right? <laughs> <laughs> but like no, it, it's the line is great. She delivers it great. Like she I, delivers it great like three separate times. She does. Yeah. She says that like yeah, yeah many times. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the good the things that really works about this movie. You're watching the same thing over and over and over again, but you're like, but it has a different impact each time. So I know, and and let's let's just call that a brilliant moment too. Even yeah. though it's like oh yeah, it's absolutely. like two or three consecutive or, or two or three different moments right because like what i think and, and i'm thinking about it now and I'd, I'd have to to pay attention next time i watch it to to confirm this but is that line delivery more or less the same in joel's memory as it is in real life that's a really good question because that would be an interesting like, i would have to if he yeah. remembers it exactly the way she said because i think it is because and yeah like i think, I think based on too. how he feels about her like the the thing is about these these two the two characters like they've got each other sized up yeah they yeah. really they oh, they're, really they're, they're gonna learn other. nothing new about each other at no point right yeah. yeah they see straight through yeah. the other one um so for for that to be the same line delivery in the memory as it is in real life would make a lot of sense because like that's how he pictures her that's yep. yeah he, he understands that he's always understood that I yeah think. that's a really good point i think that's really true we made it true yeah
but no, I, I memory, memory can do that. Yeah, but it's also like a really formative moment in their relationship. And I feel like it's the same cycle that they obviously like they keep going through the same cycle. Right. And she's always going to have that speech yeah. no matter what they do. It's always going to get to that like, oh, oh, my God, I'm not going to complete you moment. Yeah. It's always going to come to that. Right. It's cyclical, but it means something new every single time. I, I, like, I don't know many movies that do that that well. Too many guys think I'm a concept or I complete them or I'm going to make them alive. I'm just a up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind don't assign me yours i remember that speech really well i had you pegged in that yeah the whole human race pegged i actually have another favorite moment that doesn't that isn't about joel and clementine but yeah. i actually really like the reveal that i can't remember their names but the where kirsten dunce it's revealed that she and and the doctor had a relationship because yeah. i didn't see that coming yeah. at first and yeah. then when you rewatch it it's kind of obvious yeah yeah but like that was just such like a gasp moment for me and you're also not really paying much attention to this whole other group of people right. but then when it's revealed that you know he was erased from her mind and it's like it's such like a violation but also she asked for it but it's like it, it's such a jarring moment well for her too to spend the whole movie talking about what you know what great work he's doing yeah and like oh this is a gift that he's given yeah. to mankind to come yeah. up with this procedure and all of these things where it's just like it reads as like schoolgirl crush stuff oh it totally does yeah but then to have the to learn that the process had been done to her and yeah. to feel so like violated by it yeah like to it wrecks two things for yeah her, right like it wrecks the feelings that she had for him and the feelings that she has about like, the, process. the process oh yeah that's when she blows the yeah. whole thing up yeah um but yeah it also like totally wrecks what the audience thinks of the doctor and the mm -hmm. fact that his wife knew about it like oh my god oh man i honestly that so that this is the other thing the, there was the scene where they first call him Mm -hmm. because they lost Joel. Like Joel takes off into yeah. different memories and yeah, they can't track yeah. him down on the thing. And she's like, I got to call him. Um, and so when they first call him, wake him up and his wife is over his shoulder in bed. Like he just rolls over in bed and answers the phone and you can barely see his wife like waking up yep. and like yep. looking at him. I love that touch. And she yep. knows what's going on. But then the way that she shows up to that scene yep. and the way that she arrives and 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 forces everybody else to reveal that she doesn't reveal anything yeah like with her energy she's just is she's exhausted I thought that was an incredible performance I, I, his, yeah and yeah. she's like she's like she's not shocked like which is surprising you're like why isn't she like screaming or like no she's like yeah oh, this again. Like, and this just a, oh don't be a monster yeah teller. yeah she, like, yeah don't be a monster know? that's a great yeah, line don't be a monster so good. Teller, and she's yeah. just done she's like you can have him yeah oh my god <laughs> it's so great good. it is a great little little performance yeah. in there yeah and that's a and to be a thing that's happening off to the side of the main yeah. thrust of the story and like out in the real world too because it's not just you know it's not just about joel and clementine being yeah revealing their you know fragility or whatever yeah. through mm -hmm. this process like everybody's messed up right and I think that's what's so great about it, that moment is because, like, you're so focused on Joel and Clementine. Mm -hmm. But then you start to think about, like, the implications of if you could actually do that. Yeah. Everyone would do it. <laughs> Everyone yeah. would be doing it. Yeah. And can we talk about uh, Elijah Wood's character? He's such a little such creep. Such a little, little wormy <laughs> Elijah a, Wood in this movie. He's such a little worm. I kind of love it, though. So he's... <laughs> His his whole deal, he's everything, uh, every little artifact of their the relationship between Joel and Clem that, that Jim Carrey has in his house. Mm -hmm. He gets rid of it. He, he turns it into Lacuna Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, they're supposed to get rid of it, but this, this dude, Elijah Wood, takes it all and uses it. To like, it's so skeevy. Yeah, he uses it to uh, seduce, I guess, yeah. or, or get into a relationship with uh, Kate Winslet's character. And it Clementine. almost works. It yeah. sort of does work. Yeah. And that, that to me is like, that's as important a story beat. Like, yeah, he's a worm. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's gross. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it works on that level. Like, there's an antagonist out there. Mm -hmm. For Jim Carrey to be like, no, I, I like he's trying to warn his memory about her. It's like well, it that's definitely not raises the stakes for sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, there's a little bit of a ticking clock. There's a it raises the stakes in an mm -hmm. interesting way, but also like to show that somebody else with the same information saying the exact same words mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that, you know, that's another bit of this movie. That's like it's not about the memories. It's not about the stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. It's about who we are. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's about, there's something else at play besides just saying the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, it serves that purpose and like kind of the purpose we were like previously talking about. Like, what would the implications be if we actually had this technology? 
And like, there would absolutely be someone who does that. Yeah. And like, again, we're so focused on Joel and Clementine that we almost like kind of forget about this like silly little batch of side characters. But I think they're really important to the story. Any other brilliant moments we need to talk about? I mean, I I feel like I'll just be repeating myself, but I love the end for the way it sums up the entire point of the movie. It's the like, end end? The end. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's where they're kind of have. It's where they're listening to um, the tapes. Yeah. The tapes. Yeah. And it's like so devastating. Like, just imagine like you're you're courting someone you just met and you like and have chemistry with. Yeah. And then you hear everything that's wrong with you coming out of their mouth. Yeah. Um, but then they, it's like playing in the background and they're still like, want to give it a shot and they do and yeah. it's like it's such like a happy little ending that it, 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 it makes me so hopeful i love the ending it's also a nice spin on like the destiny motif yeah. right like they were destined to be together but you know it's like you get destiny and and self-actualization like you you are in control of your own destiny and yet at the same time it's still destined to happen right yeah which it's hard there's, to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, there's that, there's that end that is like a really great end to the, to the story, like screenplay wise, like yeah. the end of the, the, um, memory sequence mm -hmm. in that crumbling house on the beach. Oh, that's great. Oh. Like that is incredible. Yeah. I think and they're just, it's that house that they, and cause we, we never really knew how their relationship sort of weirdly started. Like that was where, yeah. because he ran away that night. Like yeah. she was like, Hey, let's hang out and, and you know, party in this random house, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and he took off. Like he, he couldn't, he couldn't do it. He didn't have the guts uh, or whatever. And, and so for him to just hang out in that memory mm -hmm. and watch it crumbling and still just kind of the way that he's standing there and just kind of like taking it all in like yeah. as it's all falling apart and the water's coming up and everything. It's just, it's such a, it, it's so tragic. And I, I, and that moment where Clementine's like, but what if you stayed this time? It's almost yeah. like a, like a desperate little question. Yeah. Like, what if like, and then he kind of like buys into it a little bit. Um, no, I feel like that's one of the more like, like produced scenes of the movie where the house yeah. is crumbling. Yeah. It's like, it's a big moment. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, um, a lot of production design went into that and mm -hmm. like, and that's another one, like the, it, it, that trick that they do periodically. They did it at, um, when he's going through the office, uh, the office again, mm -hmm. um, when the memories are kind of on their way out mm -hmm. and they're lit with kind of like this circular, like blue spot. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a consistency to how a memory that's almost gone looks yeah. too. Yeah. Which, and, and it's really on display in that last scene because the whole thing is just like, it's like you had a flashlight above, you know, the lens, and it was just, you just saw a little bit and you saw, you see some house, you know, parts of the house kind of crumbling and the water coming up here and sand is overrated. That's a great line. <laughs> that is a good line. Yeah. Such a good line. Sand is overrated. It's just tiny little rocks. I brought it up earlier, but I also do really like that scene where they're on the train and he's like almost trying to avoid her because he's like awkward and she just like won't give up. And it's yep. because like, and then you learn it's because like there is something about them that is just drawn to each other. Yeah. Um. But I think that like opening, like this is what the relationship is like. Like she's giving, he's not giving back and this is ultimately their undoing. Yeah. But, and speaking about that train scene, that's as good a spot as any to transition into some things you didn't know. Ooh. There's behind, a lot of good ones on this movie. Behind the scene. Yeah. I feel like we touched on a, a couple already yeah. kind of accidentally because some of the, some of the things you didn't know, uh, you know, it, just behind the scenes trivia kind of things are so much of it has to do with like how they pulled it off. Yeah. Which, so we already talked about things like, you know, force uh, perspective, force perspective mm -hmm. and all of that. Like the, the massive, um, but the, the, the segue I was using there yeah. about the train, like they shot that on a, on location on a real moving train yep. and they had just a very quick window to actually get it done which mm -hmm. like shooting on a train like that's on a schedule <laughs> like, that's yeah gotta be, yeah that's got to be impossible but it speaks to the, to the idea that like it was a frustrating process i think and i think uh, alex i think you mentioned earlier reading about how jim carrey really didn't enjoy oh yeah working on this movie much. yeah because they were they were uh trying really hard to pull him out of jim carrey the movie star which i think and then i think you touched on that earlier it was like the truman show was still kind of like 
comedic Jim Carrey in a serious yeah. role. Yeah. Yeah. But this was Jim Carrey, like, as we've never seen him. But truly, it was Jim Carrey as we've never seen him. And apparently, he did not have a good time <laughs> doing that. I, I read one, one instance where he got frustrated with Gondry because Michelle Gondry would take Kate Winslet into another room and say, this scene is supposed to be funny. Mm-hmm. And then he would take Jim Carrey separately and say, this scene is supposed to be a drama. Yeah. And they That's had great. different... They had different goals going into it, but he did that specifically because he, I guess he didn't, didn't trust or didn't think or thought that was the best way to deal with Jim yeah. Carrey, yeah. Ace Ventura, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the idea that it was a frustrating, it's funny too, he's watching some of the interviews with him after the movie, like mm-hmm. the one where I, I, I heard about the elephants scene. Yeah. Um, he, he loved it. I think it was one of those things. I heard the same thing about Tom Hardy on Mad Max, hated filming it, was mad the whole time, but then he saw Somewhere. the movie and he's like, oh, you know what? This is great. Yeah, yeah. this world. <laughs> Tip of the hat. Yeah, I'm su- really surprised he didn't get an Oscar nomination for this. I mean, what was the competition? Not that I have that Wikipedia for, page. Yeah, right? for yeah. for Jim Carrey, it, you mean? Yeah. The comp- so what year would this have been? 2005 Oscars? Would have been yeah. the 2005 so, Oscars. Jamie Foxx won for Ray. Uh, Don Cheadle for Hotel Rwanda. Johnny Depp for Finding Neverland. Leo DiCaprio for The Aviator. And Clint Eastwood for Million Dollar Baby, of course. Clint Eastwood. Uh, I think he's better than those. Yeah, I'll yeah. take this. This yeah. is a more memorable, memorable yeah. performance. Yeah, I don't really talk about any of those before. For I mean, sure. yeah, I mean, Jamie Foxx's Ray Charles was great, but. So the other thing, here's another thing that maybe you didn't know. Uh, a lot of the, we talked a little bit about it, a lot of the visual tricks and gags, like there's very little CG yep. mm-hmm. done with some of these. One of my, my favorite example of that is there's the scene um, where he, one of the scenes where he's revisiting the memory of him talking to Tom Wilkinson mm-hmm. and he's in the doctor's office and they're talking and there's a scene where, you know, present day Jim Carrey walks through, sees the memory, the camera pans over and Jim Carrey in the memory is sitting over here. Right. That wasn't, they didn't hide a cut. They didn't do anything. That was Jim Carrey running oh. behind the camera, taking off his jacket and sitting down. I totally believe that now that I'm picturing it in my head. Yeah. Yeah. And then the camera moves back and he gets up and does it again. Yeah. And like, that's how they did it, oh. which is, it's stuff like that. That's yeah. just like, you know what? Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the kind of thing that's, it's the oldest tricks are the best yeah. kind of those like- approach. Uh, there's one, I don't know if you found this one too, um, but apparently... Uh, they had a very traditional like Oscar winning editor and they got so frustrated that they quit. And at one point they just didn't have an editor and they were completely screwed. And it was like, yeah, I can imagine that's a really tough movie to edit. Uh, but Vladis Oscar Dottir eventually stepped in. Um, all that fo- footage went to our editor, a traditional editor. Um, lucky to get her, but it was not at all what she was used to. Because every shot was every setup, the editor's assistant couldn't organize the folders for the footage in a traditional way. So it was just not traditional enough yeah. for what she was used to, which it's a very untraditional. Yeah, like, again, like it's film. it's one of those things is like structurally, it's a it's a pretty straightforward yeah. movie. You know, yeah. boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy and meets I, girl back. I like this quote too. He says, we were like, this is so cool. It looks so good. We had no idea if it was cuttable, which is so <laughs> true. I could totally picture that with this movie. <laughs> that has to be such a pain in the ass too, right? Because it's like shooting the same scene over and over with minute detail changes. Yeah. And it's just being like, And right, trying like, to organize that? Like, I get yeah. it. I get it. Memento almost derailed this movie in, in some so ways. That's so funny. So like the Charlie Kaufman, and there's an interview uh, that he gave saying that they pitched the idea several years before Memento came out. Um, he was going to write it, but then had to do adaptation first and then had to go to human nature after that. Um, plus, it was just it's just a difficult movie to write. It yeah. took a while to write because it's it's uh, complex in, in a lot of a lot And you want to make sure you're not missing something. Like, yeah. you could totally throw it down. Uh, but then uh, Memento um, came out and he thought, oh, well, I can't do this anymore. And he said, I thought, oh, I can't do this anymore. And I called Michelle and I said, I'm not doing it. Then we called Steve Golan and said, we're not doing it. He was, he's, I guess a, that's a producer, I guess. Yep. Uh, he was very angry. And he said, no, you're doing it. So uh, we did it. And I wasn't influenced by Memento except in, in that way. Uh, I've never seen Total Recall, but I've read a lot of Philip K. Dick stories and books. And I don't <laughs> think that was a direct influence on this, but I certainly like his work. So he yeah, <laughs> he likes Philip K. Dick. He was freaked out a little bit by Memento, and he got bullied into actually writing this, this movie. I also his really Academy like Award winning yeah, his, yeah, 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 and then he wins an Academy Award yeah. for it. So Oops. good good work, uh, Steve Golan. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's how you produce. 
<laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Not to bring up everything ever all at once again, but it's funny because like they were saying like we started doing the multiverse in 2010 and then Marvel happened. <laughs> like there's so many occasions of that where you start yeah. doing something. And it's like, oh, God, like there's no new idea. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Going back to Jim Carrey not having a very good time. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone was encouraged on set to improvise except Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> they really wanted him to have a bad yeah. time on yeah. that movie. So, and it's not because he was too much of a ham, but because his character is reserved and unspontaneous. Yeah. So there's a character-based reason why they wouldn't let him actually... Uh, improvise. I mean, I would is, say maybe yeah. they went overboard with trying to reel in Jim Carrey, but it worked. Like, yeah, yeah. well, and, and that's a funny, I mean, not funny, it's an interesting approach because, like, you know, you can improvise being unspontaneous. Like, yeah. that doesn't mean you have to follow a script to be boring, right. I guess. I mean, you can say kind of whatever, but. but yeah, this was the deal. Sometimes I had to talk to Kate Winslet in a different room, tell her to go as big as you want. And then to Jim, I'd say this is a drama, so keep it down. Yeah. Again, I don't know if they needed that, but yeah. can I really argue with it? I no. did for for what it's worth. Though, the I'd proof also is read, on screen. Though, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever happened, like, yeah. and that might be a thing where like Jim carries in a much better mood about it after he saw the movie. Oh and yeah, was like, yeah. Okay, I see what yeah. you're doing. There's also one other piece of trivia which i'm assuming we're going to save for the end well that's what i'm saying it, it, i i know what you're thinking of yeah. and it segues yeah. into your segment Kevin. um but let's we'll we'll save that we'll just stay tuned for an additional things you didn't know but before we do that let's let's get into who's your mvp who is the person in front of or behind the camera that this would be a different movie had they had they not worked on it not an easy mvp because i think kaufman's great i think carrie's great um but i give it to kate yeah. Yeah. I give it I I just I and Clementine as a character. Yeah. I I again I've I've talked about this, but I think Clementine as a character is kind of the reason why, at least for me, this movie holds up so well and it's so timeless. Career defining role. Yeah. Career defining like and it was huge for her yeah. at the time too. Yeah. Um, is it though? Yeah. I think so. Like again, and this is not me trying to like I, I don't want to diminish anything. Kate Winslet's done like she's incredible, but like it's hard for me to say this is head and shoulders above anything else she's done because like it's all it's all great. Really? No, no, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, I think this is I think this is like top. I think this is S tier. Okay. Kate Winslet. Listen, there's not me, there's I I can't think of a bad Kate Winslet role. That's I can't. Yeah, either. yeah, but I think this is the best. Yeah, this is my I, yeah. Favorite. That's the, yeah. that's the the trick I'm having is like yeah. I can't think of any time that she's been she's been worse than this I or have, better than this. I have like, she's all she's so she's consistently so consistent. outstanding. Yeah, yeah. That, I have recency bias on Mayor of East Town. Mary of Easttown's great. Mary of Easttown's yeah. great. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's this, a good one. This is just incredible. Right. Yeah. And Revolutionary Road, great. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like, you, it's just. I don't remember the reader much, though. Which I don't that, either. I don't... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, uh, she was great. I'm assuming yeah, I'm sure. she was Yeah. Great you can say it. that evergreen. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> there I mean, just probably wasn't a good Clint Eastwood yeah. movie. It's just. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason she won. Clint yeah. Eastwood took the year off. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, like we all know, what Clementine. Yeah. <laughs> it's such like yeah. a, it's such a real character. Yeah, yeah. Um, which again, so that, well. that speaks to the approach of this whole movie is like everything in here has to be real. Yeah, except for this memory bullshit. Yeah, yeah. like, and that's going to be weird. Mm -hmm. Everything else has to be super re real. And it's so like yeah, so much of the rest of it is normal. Yeah, just two people drawn to each other but incompatible. Right. Yep. Cal, what about you? I'm I'm all Kate. Winslet. You're okay, Winslet. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Because I mean, like, what? I'm going to pick Charlie Kaufman. I disagree with him getting the statue for this one. Really? Uh, yeah, I think. I think Wait, I, I, ha I still I have think the, he should have uh... gotten the statue for another one of his, his yeah, works or somebody I, else that year. No, I'm all about adaptation. I think that that is like that man's crowning. But I mean, because I, I still have this Wikipedia page open. I mean, his competition was The Aviator, Hotel Rwanda, The Incredibles. Oh, The Incredibles? Really? Wow. wow. Yeah. Was that before that. the animation Oscar came into play? Uh, no. Uh, it won Best Animated oh. Feature Film. Wow. Okay. okay. And Vera Drake. I don't know what that one was. Yeah. Um, but like, I think of the category, it definitely deserved it that year. Like, I just think she does such a great job. And she, like, Jim Carrey too, but mostly her. Right? Yeah. Like, Michelle Gondry did an excellent job directing this movie, and mm -hmm. it's a very Michelle Gondry film, right? Mm -hmm. But its charisma isn't coming as much from the direction as it is from the performance. Oh yeah, and like okay. I said earlier, it's she's just magnetic yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I listen. I don't disagree. Like she's she's an anchor in this movie that that everything else is just playing off of. Mm -hmm. Frankly, like she's the whole point of the movie. Yeah. But. I, I'm going to give it to Michelle Gondry. I'm not going to argue with you about it. Yeah. Well, no, no. You, I, you, I'm going to ask you to. Okay, good. <laughs> the whole so point of this podcast. <laughs> you got to argue. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, I mean, the idea that like 
I think I, I mentioned it earlier. Like there's no, there's not many better examples of the right filmmaker doing the right story at the right time. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's a reason why none of his other movies are really popped the way that this one did, because this is exactly the right subject matter and the right kind of story that fits his particular brand of quirkiness. So right? can I ask you another question? Yes. Do you think one of his other movies didn't come off like this one because there wasn't a Kate Winslet level uh, caliber of performance in his other movies? I mean, I think I think Nick and Adaptation was pretty high caliber. Who, well, that wasn't Michelle Gondry. That was oh, Michelle yeah. Oh, that, that was, oh, Spike yeah, Jones. Yeah, like that was a different yeah, music yeah, yeah, yeah. video director. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, Spike Jones. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, yeah. I don't think that, like, that's. I can. I could see that being. But you know, I mean, Gael Garcia Bernal is is generally pretty great. Yeah. I don't think he's Kate Winslet great, but you know, but like, I don't think he's had bad performances, or I don't think. He's, I, I think, think that I think that you put anybody else in this in this movie and we're not anybody else directing this movie and i don't think we're still talking about but it. but i think you do. put anyone else in kate in, as in the clementine I, role and you you're not still talking about it in the yeah i was just gonna say I, th I think like when i think when a director is chosen like when we're gonna choose like the director of like who's the winner of the movie right that's like a case for the sum is greater than the parts of the whole and i don't necessarily think that the the whole is definitely larger than kate winslet's contribution to yeah, it. yeah i agree okay actually like michelle know. gondry I mean, is like actually like number four on my list really i, I think yeah you, i think yeah i agree with that yeah i i would go like kate kaufman jim Cause, carrey cause, michelle yeah because you know. i like his visual style yeah. and i'm not saying that that doesn't add anything right but like the script isn't him the mm. performances to an extent the script him. is partially him he got credit sure it's, uh, it's a very kaufman script he though. got he yeah. got a credit that's fair yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still I still stand by him. He, he, he got yeah. at least he gets you know joint custody of the statue. Uh, <laughs> joint if they custody. Didn't, if they didn't <laughs> give not, them three separate statues. The do, they not yeah. get, do they not get three separate statues? Uh, I, surely they do. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I hope they do. That'd be sad. I'd like to imagine. I, no, yeah. I'd like to have to see like the Academy pays for like the cop Kaufman and M Michelle <laughs> yeah. Gondry. They go to, to the like, governor's ball and just like fight over it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. They have That's to go who... to court to, to <laughs> figure out a custody battle. It's just Charlie Kaufman trying to explain to the statue that this, listen, I'm sorry, this weekend you were with Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, and no, but I, I mean, I do, I feel like my, my memory of this movie is as, I mean, ev as, as good as everybody is in it, like they're in order of things that are memorable about it. It's the visual elements of it mm -hmm. are like right near the top. I see. I think that's where then it's, yeah, then it's yeah. one of Jim for me, it's performances. Yeah. I mean, okay. Agree. I, disagree. No, I'm not going to, I'm just going to straight up disagree. <laughs> <laughs> do that no because i i think the visual style is great but i just don't think this... i don't think it matters how good or bad kate winslet or jim carrey are if wow. this movie doesn't have if this movie wow. is ne next listen thing. if this movie isn't as like if it is shot in a more straightforward way no one cares it's a good performance great yeah that's awesome but it doesn't Jeez. the whole thing coming together and pulling in the same direction the way that it does uh, is Michelle Gondry. Like, you're yeah, making, he's got... You you're can, making it sound like we're, we're saying this movie is directed by, like, Chad GPT. <laughs> and, like... <laughs> no, but... No, and I do love the... Uh, and, like, yes, that's that's a very big reason why it works. But when I think of this movie, I think of Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey. Like, I think yeah. of their... Like, how much chemistry they had. But how before real I think that of really them, I think of, like, the <sighs> the visual quirk of, of Michelle Gondry. But I, I do feel like... An, I feel like another director could have done that. No, like Spike Jones. You, you mean, I mean, you, yeah. yeah. Do you mean to tell me that like Spike Jones wouldn't have been able to to direct this movie in a way that was memorable? Yeah, uh, it's Spike Jones can, but I mean, you also it's, can't tell me that Kate Winslet was the only actress talented uh, she was the enough best. to. No, I, well, Michelle Gondry was the best. No, and, I mean, you can't. Like, no, you're right. Not, I, Natalie Port <laughs> like if, yeah, Nat no, no. if Natalie Portman passed on, like, what was that? That was Garden State. Garden State. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Natalie like, Portman's not busy doing Garden State. If yeah. Zach Braff directs Eternal Sunshine, oh yeah. Jesus Christ, no one yeah. cares. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. I won't okay, argue but that Zach point. Braff, but <laughs> would have had would have had a, as good a soundtrack. Here's Osidius. Where? Right there. Three. Sort of a swoop and a cross. Osidius the emphatic. <laughs> You're full of shit, right? Nope. Well, city is right there. Swoop and cross. <laughs> 
let's let's talk really really quickly about what lists this movie would show up on because it deserves to be up on. on I'll tell you what lists. list it's not going to be on the best directors list. Hey. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, wow! How about uh, the directors that? They think, only made one masterpiece. Yeah. Um, I mean, music video directors, I would give them that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It, 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 tell you what list, list it's there. actually okay. on, since this movie is old enough to have been around the entire time we've been making movie lists. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually gotten 11 mentions and four actual picks Pretty impressive. over the years. Most, it, it was on biggest best picture snubs. Yes. <gasps> yes. So yes. That, was was. A, that was a list we did way back in the day. Um on best screenplays, very recently, recent uh, hit. It was recent picked. Banger. Yeah, it was picked as um, the information reveal <laughs> because it's such a it's such a weirdly complicated premise. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like it as you're watching it. Like you follow it from start to finish, no yeah. problem. Uh, even though it is a bizarrely complex uh, emotionally, yeah. But like yeah. structurally, again, super clean, super simple. Mm-hmm. Which, um, not to interrupt you, but I don't think every single Kaufman script has succeeded. At. No, no, hundred percent. They have yeah. top ten romances. Made yeah. the list. It was the pick for the uh, second chances category in top ten romance. Oh, nice. Which again, like to to your point about how great the ending is. Like, yeah. Um, and then we also made it in eight bit. Eight bit oh. cinema. Okay. Oh. Eternal sunshine. That's you oh, know that old gonna... Nintendo game, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did he remake the trailer all crappy like or no? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He he did that himself. <laughs> a couple movies later. Uh, but are there any other? I would say, like if there's you know top ten like like in camera editing effects or something. That'd like, be I mean, a that would be one, another like real specific thing. But like, what about like memory erasing films? Yeah, just like memory movies. Memory yeah. movies. Yeah. I mean, Memen- Men in Black. Does Men in Black is Men in Black know. first yeah. and foremost <laughs> a memory yeah, movie? Absolutely. No. <laughs> first one i thought of though yeah you know you yeah. know that famous memory movie yeah of course Black. there's memento there's men in black there's eternal sunshine and <laughs> smith yeah. wishes that men in black at tech lit existed today <laughs> yeah 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 that i mean it, it, it's funny that at least they didn't i mean this it's a weirdly i've made that joke he twice was, now <laughs> i mean Charlie Charlie Kaufman being worried about Memento and mentioning Total Recall, but completely skating past Men in Black. Honestly, yeah. oversight. As like a, is like a, oh, you better pay attention. Make yeah. sure you're not treading on some of the same ground that Men I in mean, Black is on. with the memory stuff. Come on. Somebody, somebody <laughs> surely told him that. Honestly, Men in Black inspired Memento. Yeah. We all know yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Total Recall, of course, yeah. would be another one. Mm-hmm. I, I think this would, maybe this is one of the things we should think of. Pitching this now as a list. Lo-fi, sci-fi. Love it. Yeah. It's one oh, of my fun. it's yeah. one of yeah. my favorite subgenres. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's not many movies that beat this one in that category. No. I mean, yeah. I, I think I mentioned Brazil earlier. Yeah. That that's mm-hmm. that's a good one. Um there's I mean they made a everything time machine everywhere out of a DeLorean. Every, yeah, yeah, everything everywhere. Everything everywhere is the same yep. same deal. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. May... Lo fi sci fi. And it's catchy too. Lo fi yeah. sci fi. Cool. Uh I typed it in this document that I'm never gonna lose. So yep. Perfect. It's going to happen. All right. Calibro, you want to take us to our last segment? So, you know, last but certainly not least, definitely the best segment. We call it the most original segment. Uh, who, <laughs> how would this, the, this is the Nick Cage segment and, you know, where we ask the eternal question that everybody always asks, how would this movie be better if and where it had Nick Cage in it? Now, there's one piece of trivia that we did not talk about in the trivia section, and that piece of trivia is: was Nicolas Cage was the originally was the original person cast to play Joel? Yep. Instead of Jim Carrey, my he personal was, favorite yeah. bit of trivia. Yeah. He was the yeah the original ask, uh, which I guess I mean there's a Charlie Kaufman adaptation yeah. uh, connection there, obviously. Yeah, yeah which makes sense. Yeah. Um, 2004 instead gave us Nicolas Cage in National Treasure, so which is no also great. Big loss. Yeah. Wait, really? You Do you think like- he would have been a better Joel than Jim Carrey? No. And can you think but of a better national treasure than I, Nicolas Cage? I, I also think he already, like, I also think he <laughs> already, like one of those Stallone Schwarzenegger rivalry things. Like yeah. Yeah. What, there's are, a there's a universe out there that exists where Jim Carrey was a national treasure. Yeah. I also think he already, <laughs> oh, that would have been good though. <laughs> Oh my god! I don't like National Treasure. I think you it's just, don't. What? I think it's just. I think it's just like it's an, a good time. Oh, it's, it's an lame Americana. It's Indiana the upper, Jones. the yeah. upper crust of cromulent. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Am, I, am I the am I the lone hater here? Yeah, which is yes. odd because you're like the Nick Cage guy. Yeah, I mean, I like a lot. I like a lot of esoteric Nick Cage. Yeah, you don't like the, oh, the so blockbuster yeah. Disney. Yeah, Nick Cage. I'm fine with populist Nick Cage. 
I listen. <laughs> un, what, what are we talking <laughs> about? Here? What, I don't what remember. Are we talking about? We, oh, so, so oh, national. The thing, yeah, the yeah. thing you didn't ben, know ben, that's Benjamin also tied Gates, to this. Ben, what's his name? Uh, Benjamin. I don't know. Some, Abraham some, Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a, some some Whatever. brutal mashup of presidential yeah. names. Yeah. yeah. It, this is the one where they steal like the uh the Declaration of Independence. Independence. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that they can find the a point. treasure that's yeah. hidden in Mount Rushmore. It's right. basic but, stuff. I, listen, yeah. would would he have done a better job than Jim Carrey? Mm, I don't know. But I guess what I'm trying to say here is he's kind of already played that role in like leaving Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And, you know, no, yeah. I, I see where it wouldn't be treading new ground yeah. for him. Or, where it was treading for new that. ground yeah. for Jim Carrey. Yeah. 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 I I don't think there's any way in hell he makes a better. <laughs> I 100% better agree. Yeah. I don't think like so. That, and that's, yeah. a, that's another sign of like a really legitimately great movie. Is and when I you yeah. start tinkering, you start pulling on yeah. these threads of like, what if they'd made this different choice or so and so would have been. And yeah. I just can't imagine I, anybody else in any of these roles. Yeah. And I also don't want him in any of the other roles, except if it was like made today, maybe he'd be Tom Wilkinson. That's what I Yeah, that was, that's the only one I would put him at. But yeah. we, I know we're talking about Nick Cage, but uh, Bjork was originally one, it was the first choice for yeah. Clementine. This is a very different movie. Yeah. Yeah, that Cage movie, no. and Bjork. That There's a very odd work. alternate universe <laughs> yeah. of this. Yeah, no, right. it doesn't work. It doesn't. <laughs> That's like green ketchup shit. Like <laughs> green ketchup. You know, um, new Coke. Yeah. Um, no, I I would put him in. I would put him in for Wilkinson. Yeah. I think, yeah. that would be, I think, I think that he would could good. do today. Yeah. Nick Cage in a today right. Eternal Sunshine with, yeah. as Wilkinson. Yeah. 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 I, I or today, that. Nick Cage yeah. in 2004. Sure. If we're you know time traveling, it'd be great. Um, I don't know that there's anybody else because no. he wouldn't be. I mean, he might have been in. He might have been a fun Ruffalo. Uh, but yeah, I was trying to like think of him as like Elijah Wood. No, no, certainly not Elijah Wood. Yeah. That would have been like a dangerous. Yeah, that would have yeah. been. That, that yeah. would have been. That would have been poor to call weird. Weird, weird yeah. little like, worm. Elijah again, Wood like, would have yeah. become like dangerous know. perv. Nicholas Cage. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the thing. There's, like, no, there's no I, ceiling. There's right. a different energy. Well, to also that character. perfect casting. I don't know who anyone who would have done yeah. that better than Elijah. Wood. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Perfect little worm. They nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where did you Where did you have it on your list? I have it on my list. I think this Minus, is the one that we have get, on all of our lists. So for me, it's 29, and I'm disappointed it's not the number 23. Um, <laughs> that was, of course, the number, the film, the number 23 yeah, was 23. Course. That's yeah, where I yeah, started yeah, my list. I yeah. filled everything in around it. I'm 92. 92. Oh, okay. Just Too making low. the cut. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, I, I was 46. Okay. That's, wow. So it did end up on everybody's but list. But in very yeah. different places. I find so, that very interesting. I would so ask, 29, I would ask yeah. where it is on Dan's list. 29, 92, 46. <laughs> Dan's, Dan's list is 38. Dan is on there. Wow. So we got four four lists here. Yeah. But a uh <laughs> so to get you uh 29, yeah, 38, 46, and 92, yeah, gets you in 14th place. 14? It's like really? four, no, it's number 14. Well, Eternal you Sunshine. Get a big bonus for being on all four of our lists, yeah. right? Apparently, I don't know the algorithm. I think so. I don't know. Yeah. Apparently yeah. the algorithm favors movies that show up on everybody's yeah. lists, which I, I can I guess I can understand. But I wonder how mo- many movies. Like that but if you right. average out 29, 92, 38, 46, yeah. you get 14 <laughs> <laughs> somehow. But I mean, honestly, it, like, is that the 14th best movie of all time? Like, who knows? I don't know. I like, I'm not for us millenniums, it. probably. I yeah. honestly right. don't mind it being that high on the Cinefix Top 100. I certainly don't. I really don't. Yeah. I, uh, I really like that movie. Same. So it's one above Independence Day? No, Independence Day was just my fifty. Yeah, so it was like eighties, uh, right? Yeah. So I, I had I had Eternal Sunshine forty six, so a solid thirty spots behind <laughs> Independence Day. <laughs> uh, but you know that math works out. And next week we're gonna be talking about uh, we're gonna go a little farther into the past with Sunset Boulevard. Oh, All right. so Sunset Boulevard wound up somewhere. another incompatible relationship. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a there, listen. There's a connection. Maybe we can start making connections between. I'm like, going to try yeah. tenuous at best connections yes. between from one movie to the next. So find out how we were able to segue perfectly cleanly from Eternal Sunshine into Sunset Boulevard. Come back next week for more Cinefix Top 100. Thanks for watching. What were we talking about? Are we out? We clear? Clear. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my dog just burped behind you. Burp. <laughs>